All right, been a little while, so I made a video. These are uh, the cattle that's are fat cattle, supposed to be. Uh, this is a barn that I built this summer. Uh, pretty good southeast winds, so the rain is coming out of that direction. Keeping most of everything dry. Needs to be bedded down. I'm gonna wait. Wait till after this rain because I've noticed what they do is they go out there and eat when it's pouring rain. Then they come back in here and all the bedding gets wet. I guess that's part of it, but it's supposed to be a little bit drier after this, so. It's in the, uh, it's in the upper 30s. It's supposed to change the snow tonight, which I'm, I'm fine with that. We've had a pretty normal winter this year. Uh, it's been, uh, I don't think we've had, we may have had a 50 degree day, but no 60s and 70s like we had last year, which is terrible for cattle health. Mostly staying in the upper 40s. Uh, I think we had a low of about 12 one night. It's supposed to get, supposedly it's supposed to get cold, which, uh, negative 20 is not normal, but it's happened around here. I think the lowest temperature we've had, um, about 20 miles north was 36 below. But, uh, I think we had 25 below. That was when I was a kid, but it hasn't been, the last time it got pretty cold was about five years ago. It got down about 15 below. That's usually with snow cover. We don't get that cold without snow cover. Uh, I'll show you what I'm feeding in here. Just uh, kind of grinding up corn. It, I'm trying to, I'm trying a few different things. This is kind of powdery, but I've got oil in it, so we'll see how it goes. They're fattening up, so that's what I want. I just worked some not long ago, and uh, gave them some implants and wormed them. There's two different sizes in there. That's the prefer. Bought it back uh, this last fall, and it's a heck of a lot better than the other way we used to do it. Uh, bought some calves uh, on the 12th, January 12th. Uh, first time I've bought weaned calves. Uh, basically weaned, they're 10 weeks old, but uh, this is gonna be a bumpy ride, so. Close your eyes if you want. But, uh, <clears throat> this guy is a calf raiser that went off. Of, he, he raised calves for another fella, and the guy paid him for calf. Well, he went off on his own, and another guy that I, I really didn't know, I knew him through a, a guy I do business with. Um, we went together and bought a group of calves. He raised 140 uh, bottle calves. And, uh, Anyway, I, I, I think he's happy with his, what he made, and I think he wants to do it again, so I don't really have the, the room to handle more cattle. So uh, it cost uh, quite a bit of money to buy the cattle and quite a bit of money to build the barn and put them in, so. Uh, our climate is not like most climates. We have droughts, but we also get a lot of rain. And uh, cold rain at that all winter, so. I think that these Holstein do a little better when they're in a barn. I know it costs more, but being a small farm, this is about the best we can do, or I can do. Uh, we've got, uh, bought some Angus, I don't know if I, mentioned in the last video but they're doing well they're about 800 pounds on the average some of them's a thousand pounds so that'll make two pot loads when they get finished uh, i'll walk out here and show them to you they're pretty skittish 
even though I'm around them quite a bit. That's the old feedway we used to feed the dairy cows with. A couple years ago, I was feeding Holstein in there, and it's got so many holes in the roof. It needs a new roof. That's for another day, but just straight silage, these do pretty good, but silage and uh, grain together, it's a pretty expensive feed when you're feeding Holstein, so. Anyway, there's a look at them. They're doing well. They're kind of muddy, but what cows aren't in the wintertime unless you're up north. I'll uh, take you over here and show you Holstein calves. Uh, I did, we did get a round baler, and I round baled some corn stalks, and I like that. Uh, for my feed ration with my Holsteins, works pretty good. Uh, I like sawdust. I don't know which one's better yet. It's a lot, a lot more expensive to use sawdust. really know it just takes time to figure all that out uh got these calves started i took the balls out of the richie and put one of those track supply water heaters down in it it's worked well it was like i said it was 15 degrees and it worked but here are the calves had them a couple weeks uh you all know my my hog feeder it's holding up well with my extensions on it. Uh, putting them on full feed. I got my little bin over here. It's $900 just for that boot. And they, those, those bins, they used it uh, in the hog operation for years and years. And it did, uh, it served its purpose already and I'm just repurposing it. It needs a new boot, so. <clears throat> These things were 10 weeks old when I got them, so I guess they're three months old now. Uh, this will make a pot load after maybe possibly if you lose here, lose some here and there. I've got uh, two other people that have got calves. They bought them as bottle calves about the same size or same time as this guy I got these calves. So, uh, so far I've only had to give one shot. Uh, they are on whole corn. Whole corn and pellets. Uh, they seem to be doing well. I'll give you a look at it. I'd like to play around with different types of corn. Uh, yeah, there's the, the corn mix. And we just you know, use this auger and auger it in here. But, uh, I had to put plywood on its side there. Uh, let the sunlight in and keep the east wind out. That's the east over there. So the sun does shine back in here in the mornings. Uh, they, they typically like that, but they don't get any afternoon sun. But I like to put a curtain over there, but that's all repurposed tin. And then you can see it's got holes in it, but it does the job. And uh, it's all just a... We'll see how it goes. Um, the fat cattle that you saw back there have already been dedicated to a butcher shop. Uh, they're all different sizes back there. They're not uniform like this. Uh, I bought them in different groups, 10 here, 11 there, 20 here, 15 there. And uh, they're all different sizes. So I've got some that are finished back there and I've got some that's probably nine hundreds of thousand pounds so that'll space out pretty good till about possibly may or june depending on how they grow i don't know how they're going to do it's kind of hard to estimate all that but this will be one pot load uh, i doubt that butcher shop will take all these all at once so this will be probably january or december of next year i was going to have a tornado or something and kill everything so uh i hate counting you chickens before they hatch but you always have to plan ahead and that's with everything uh, I like to try to plan two or three years out with cattle and uh, that's kind of hard to do but 
a few videos back, I said I wanted to do uh, sell calves every quarter to hit all the markets. I might hit a low market or a high market. Now that I'm finishing, I'm just trying to do two groups to cut down on the work and do two bigger groups. Uh, I'll be spending a whole lot more time grinding feed. Uh, there are no bottle calves in the future. Uh, I've raised bottle calves for nine years to where I can get to the part I want to do this, and I'm sure that I keep. I want to keep doing this for a while. Uh, this goes works for me having a job. So uh, I'm uh, pretty pretty satisfied with it you don't make a whole lot but the opportunity to make more is there i think with fat cattle versus selling them at seven or eight hundred pounds uh, the profit can possibly be the same a whole lot when you sell them at seven eight hundred pounds and your risk goes up when you start putting 25 to 30 pounds of feed in these things once they get over 800 to a thousand pounds they eat 2% of their body weight, two and a half is what you want. But it's uh, it's riskier, but I think the uh, the possibility to make more is there. So with more risk usually comes uh, more reward or worse. It can be either go either way. But like I said, the, the whole bottle cap thing got me on my feet. Got me to understand cattle, got me to understand the drugs and how everything works. Uh, I can tell you I don't work near as hard with these things as I did when I had bottle calves. And that's the reason why people like to do raise these things. Uh, it's, uh, it's a difficult road, but it's definitely rewarding. So I used to have people ask me all the time about bottle calves and raising them and stuff. And it, it's, a, it's a good side income if you have a job. You can raise bottle calves and if you can get them. And, send them get them up to whatever size you want and then sell them and you don't have to worry about having all the grain my dad he crops he has a uh, usually has plenty of grain and i buy my corn from him at market price so that's how we got that worked out works good for me so uh anyway i figured i'd give you a little update i might try to there ain't really anything going on right now so I might do a video grinding feed or something Thanks for watching.